Good evening, and welcome to the commencement exercise for year 2005. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ron Berndt, our superintendent, and I'd like to just say a couple of words about Dr. Berndt. He is retiring this year after 17 and a half years of serving the Hudson School District and after participating in handing out diplomas to over 5,000 high school graduates. Let's welcome and thank Dr. Byrne for an outstanding job. <clears throat> my first graduation ceremony was in this heat, and my last will be too. So, as superintendent, though, of the Hudson Schools, I want to formally welcome you to the 2005 graduation ceremony. I think it's obvious to you that we had to go with our plan B. We would prefer to have been outdoors, but any of you that were late coming know why that wasn't the case. Uh, we have well over 1,500 people here in attendance, and at least another 800 who are not going to be here in person but are in our auditorium and will be viewing the graduation via closed circuit TV. The only difference is they will be sitting in air conditioned seats. <laughs> With that being said, uh, if you will please stand for a moment of silence. And that moment of silence will be for those who for whatever reason are unable to be with us here tonight and that will be followed by the playing of our national anthem which will be followed by our senior choir's members rendition of America the Beautiful. Thank you for your silence. While the senior choir members are gathering in the back, the senior class has asked to start a new tradition this year, and that is for our senior members to sing an honorary song.
Good evening. I'd like to welcome our graduates, school board members, family, honored guests, and friends to the 2005 commencement ceremony this evening. And I know many of you came prepared to endure the heat. I too have also come prepared. <laughs> you are so kind. We have been fortunate the last few years to have held graduation outside at Newton Field, but as many of you know, last year we got caught in the rain, and I told Mr. Smith to please keep his speech short, but he just wouldn't listen, and he went on and on and on. It's unfortunate the weather did not cooperate with us this year. When serious situations exist and so many people are involved, it prevents us from taking risks, and we must be careful in our decisions. Graduates, you have taken many risks in school and throughout your personal lives. As a result, you have shown tremendous growth. Some of the risks you have taken has, have resulted in tremendous learning experiences, and hopefully you have learned from those opportunities. But graduates, as you venture forward from this day, you will become more and more personally responsible for your successes and now as well as your failures. You have begun a major transition in your life. Parents, family, and friends, I have tremendous confidence that the class of 2005 will be very successful on the journey they are about to embark. They have already proven that they have laid the foundation for success. Their ACT and SAT scores prove to us that these graduates Academically, their academic performance ranks higher than all national averages. 80% of these graduates, 80% of these graduates have chosen to go on to some type of post-secondary education. You need to know something else about this class as well. The leadership and personal character these graduates have shown over the last four years is outstanding. Over 150 of these graduates served as senior mentors for the underclassmen. They have played a key role in the success of our school. Not only have these graduates helped our school, but they have had a huge impact on the community as a result of the service projects they have participated in. These students have logged thousands of hours helping students in our elementary schools, the elderly at the Christian community home, and supplying food for the food shelves. The tribute this class showed to those who have given their lives for the freedoms of our country have touched the heart of everyone and have started a new tradition at Hudson High School. Graduates involved in virtually every organization have given something back to the school, community, and society. I think the character of this class can be summed up for the whole class by a quote from a member of our National Honor Society. This young lady said, the greatest benefit of being part of NHS, and I add Hudson High School, is seeing the smiles on people's faces you have helped. Graduates, you have helped many, and there is no greater joy in life than helping someone in need. I am very proud of the contributions you have made to our school and to the community, and I want to thank you and wish you the best of luck. At this time, I'd like to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2005. This young man is a member of our band, choir, quiz bowl team, the chess club, our school newspaper, and was a peer tutor. In addition, he still found time to play football and run track. He will attend UW-Madison as a member of the Medical Scholars Program with hopes of becoming a pediatric neurologist. I present to you at this time Hudson High School's 2005 valedictorian, Sam Cole.
class of 2005. We made it. Who here is ready to graduate? Come on. Yeah? All right. Confucius once said, good speech is like lady's skirt. Shorter is better. OK, OK. Maybe I made that up. But I will stick to it. So while I have complete control of your minds for the next few minutes, I'm going to make only one point. And that point is, the future is ours, problems included. Right now, sitting before me, see the future artists, musicians, doctors, lawyers, authors, actors, engineers, scientists, technicians, senators, professional athletes, and business owners. And all we need to make this possible is time, hard work, and passionate dedication. You might be thinking, that's real funny because, you know, these things just grow on trees here and there. But the only difference between a dream and reality is action. Can all of you AP learners say paradoxical sleep? Scientifically proven, there's no moving while dreaming. Of course, a person who rather dream is the poorest person. But it's also important to live your dreams. So as some would like to say, get her done. <laughs> Next year, we will all be going on to bigger things, the real world. For those of you that are jumping straight into a field, good luck. You certainly have a better plan than I do. For those of us going to college, statistically, since we all love statistics, half of us will not make it all the way. Personally, I think this is just a scare tactic, like the eighth grade teachers saying how mean the high school teachers will be. In any case, is that what we want to become, a mere statistic? We are much better than that. Our biggest enemy, besides senioritis, which will unfortunately develop into chronic collegeitis, is unforeseen crises that will pl plague our lives. Things like forgetting homework, getting pop quizzes on that homework, and finally botching class grades from failing those pop quizzes. I once had a teacher who maybe learned the five P's of success. Prior preparation prevents poor performance. That basically means have a plan B, like something we're doing right now, and a plan C, and for good measure, plan O, for overkill. Let us be honest, life sometimes will pull a matrix, dodge this. We all know it's very difficult to dodge something that already hit you, but do not ever give up. Hate to break it to you, but you cannot do the impossible. And once you give up on your dreams, they are officially impossible. But that is only once you give up. The trick to surviving such a disaster is to look at what you do have and make it up as you go. There's always an alternate solution. When a new opportunity appears, take it. The chance will not last. It does not matter if you have no idea how to proceed. Improvise, wing it, make it up as you go. No glue, use duct tape. No socket wrench, pliers will do. No hammer, go find a very large rock. Young Jedis, you must use the force. Sorry, I'm a nerd. <laughs> Better yet, become the force. Use your own talent. Don't let it go to waste. Trust your own skills and be creative. Do not, waiting, do not bother waiting for a miracle. As part of humanity, we are God's greatest miracle. So make it a great life or not, the choice is ours. Muchas gracias. Godspeed. Our next guest speaker 
is Ms. Annie Cromer, the President of our Student Council. Change is an inevitable part of life. The moment we took that first step into our kindergarten classroom about 13 years ago, our lives changed. School became our lives from then until today, and for many of us, this will continue next year. We were forced into change. We are now told that everything is going to change. Nothing will ever be the same again. We are now entering into this ever vast real world. We are entering a new stage of our lives, Yet, it is just another stage, another step. We have done this before, and I'm certain we will easily do it again. We have conquered change our entire lives. Throughout our education, each school year, each school year has introduced new changes that we have adapted to without hesitation. Elementary school brought days of recess, snack breaks, and show and tell. We think back to these days now with a sigh. Everything was so simple. We never really had anything difficult to accomplish, or did we? I can vividly recall the day my teacher plastered the word together across the board. All I could do was gape at it. It was the longest word I had ever seen in my entire life. Uh -oh. we would, but my teacher reassured my class with confidence that we would someday be able to quickly just glance at this word and know it immediately. I thought, she must be crazy. There is never a distinct moment when you can suddenly read. It is this gradual process. There are moments when you screamed out in frustration because the English language does crazy things like add silent Bs to the end of, end of words and has the PH make the F sound. But in the end, you adapted without even realizing it. You one day found yourself sitting down and reading for fun. Learning to read was probably one of the most difficult challenges in our lives so far. It required our full concentration and devotion, and we accepted the challenge with vigor and conquered the change that altered the remainder of our education and lives. Elementary school came with what yet one, difficult, one more difficult task to master, cursive. Copying all those loops and swoops from the blackboard became the dreaded part of my day, and I still wonder why. Why did we ever learn cursive? Our teachers told us that when we got older, we'd definitely use it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I believe we were lied to. I remember spending endless nights writing out cursive words on the big lined paper that was about four wide rule lines tall. The challenge of it all was excruciating. We were expected to change all of a sudden from our still shaky printing to a more professional, grown up way of writing. We were forced to change our ways, but yet again, we adapted to the change and pressed on. Then we entered middle school. This stage in our life presented us with a different sort of change physical change. Sixth, seventh, and eighth grade were the awkward years. Middle school were the years where for many of us, braces played a pivotal role in the formation of our fragile self-esteem. It is crazy to think that retainers on lunch trays were at one point in time acceptable, possibly even cool. But instead of dwelling on our physical appearances, we moved forward, we accepted the change. It was during these year, three years that lifelong friendships were born, and we were soon prepared to enter HHS. We found ourselves on our own as freshman year commenced. We did not have senior mentors to show us the ropes, and almost everything was new to us. Yet we pulled through, carrying our overloaded backpacks with us. As sophomore year rolled around, we were feeling more confident. The only thing we really thought had changed from freshman to sophomore year was that we were no longer freshmen. But do you recall paper passes? On the first day of 10th grade, we were issued the pass book. The days of paper passes stacked freely and at our disposal on teachers' desks were no more. The administration was cracking down. Junior year came with yet another subtle change. TVs hooked up with cable connection in nearly every corner of the school. We were now able to catch the weekly lunch menu for elementary, middle, and high school. Finally, this year as seniors, we walked into HHS on the first day of school to find the floors as we had known them gone, the carpeting replaced by tile. Nevertheless, each year, without even realizing our own strength, we adapted to changes, both large and small. We moved forward. And in some instances, we became so accustomed to the new, we forgot the old. So as we venture into the world of the unknown, into this real world, we can go confidently because we have conquered change so many times before. 
And although we will not have the comfort of anticipating the ever mouth-watering taste of Italian Dunkers, or for that matter, the beefy taco bake, we will know that we can conquer the change we are dealt and adapt. It may take time, but we will be victorious. Each year, the senior class chooses a teacher to represent our staff to provide a few words of wisdom. At this time, I'd like to introduce Ms. Mary Britton. Wow, it's a big class. I'd like to welcome the administrators up here and those in the wings. I'd like to welcome the parents, especially those who are alumni and my former students. Having the faces of your sons and daughters challenged me to nostalgic, energetic heights. Welcome families, relatives, and friends. You've planted and nurtured a beautiful garden in Hudson. I'm honored to be here tonight. I have felt honored many days to teach many of you and there are many of you I would have felt honored to have had in my classroom. For the last 30 years, classes like you, not quite like you, but you have kept me smiling and so in tune with who you are as a young generation. You've been a challenge to me, as I suppose sometimes I was to you. I have read thousands of pages of your creations, your dreams, your analyses of literature, and of the world. But now, I look forward to reading what you would, well, will be written about you. What will your story hold? This class has so much talent entwined with a genuine passion for life. I feel one day I will read about Sam Coe or Ali Conkle. Maybe it'll be Dr. Coe and Dr. Conkle who have contributed to the world of medical breakthroughs, cures, significant scientific technology. Maybe there's a new formula within you right now bursting to be put on paper and to the test. Maybe I'll read about little Cassie Long winning the Kentucky Derby as the first female to do so. Maybe it'll be a story featuring Nick Crane wearing a NASCAR jacket or helmet, being recognized as a driver or a designer of a new engine. You may not know it, but the automobile and the truck took on poetic proportions in his writing. Or maybe it's going to be Danny Hansen making a mark for women everywhere. Maybe it'll be about Kellen Sikorsky or Jana Fosterling's compassionate endeavors in Africa. Or Matt Widgren, Sean Hampton, Nick Larson, will maybe surprise the world with new and exciting designs in construction. And with the architectural insights of Chris Schoberg, our homes and cities will reflect a changing world. Or maybe it'll be the stories of entrepreneurs like Corey Peters, Megan Martell, and the whole cast who orchestrated my most memorable high school event for Memorial Day. Or Nikki Lures, who has read every book I could find to give to her. Maybe Nikki has the tw great 21st century novel in her. Or maybe it'll be written by Dan E. Peterson, Jessica Schaefer, Roxanne Nishkigan Nishkanen, Kurt McMahon, there's so many of you out there. Or perhaps 
It'll be about Ronnie Castor. And Mallory Doran, who have collaborated on a fashion design. Mallory has the color and intrigue. Ronnie, a revolutionary pair of pants. They're low, they're loose, yet hovering strategically without a belt. They're called the hover pants. You might need some help from the physics gurus, though. But all of you have shown glimpses of your stories. I look forward to reading your life's story of passion and contribution. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as it is executed with conviction and passion. Find your passion, hold it dear, then plant it deep. Withstand the drought and the deluge, have patience, because, and I have to mention one of my favorites, as Thoreau wrote, I wish to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life. Living is so dear. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life to live so sturdily and Spartan-like as to put rout all that was not life, to cut a broad swath and shave close, to drive life into the corner and reduce it to its lowest terms. And if it proved to be mean, why then, to get the whole and genuine meanness out of it? And if it were sublime, to know it by experience. Challenge yourself to live deep. You've challenged me to live deep in my profession. I have found the passion as a teacher, a mother, a daughter, a sister, a friend. If just one life breathes easier because of you, then you have lived. This encompasses all facets of life as a doctor or nurse, dietitian or beautician, mechanic or craftsman, artist or florist, researcher or minister, mother or father. Plant your garden, nourish your surroundings. I breathe easier when I go to the salon and my hair turns out the way I wanted it, when my broken car is fixed, when my toilet flushes, when my aches and pains subside, when my soul is soothed, when my friends laugh, when my children hug me, and when you the students of 2005 give me the opportunity and honor to speak at your graduation. This evening is the end of your prologue and the beginning of your story. What is your passion? What will you plant in your garden and how will it unfold? Who will you breathe easier because of you? You are the authors, yet what will be written about you. And before I close, Janelle Daniels, where are you? The little yellow couch is yours. Come see me. Thank you, congratulations, God bless all of you and your stories. At this time, I would like to introduce Mrs. Annette Cook, the president of our school board. At this time, I'd like to present to Mrs. Cook the class of 2005. They have met the requirements for the state of Wisconsin to receive their diplomas for graduation. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Education, I also would like to welcome you here this evening 
in this warm, muggy gymnasium. It reminds me of Grand March for prom, where the parents are sitting in the heat watching their children. I would like to introduce my fellow board members who are with us this evening. They are Cindy Crimmins, Nancy Donovan, Mark Kaiserschott, and Priscilla Wyeth. And I would ask you to stand, please. Parents, grandparents, friends of the graduates, staff members, I would like to personally thank you for being here this evening to celebrate this important event with these young people and also for your support of these children of yours, these friends, these grandchildren throughout their school lives. Um, it has been important, I know, in their lives. So thank you. Graduates, most importantly, I would like to welcome you here this evening and I would like to congratulate you as you complete your education here in Hudson. We applaud you, graduates, for your many accomplishments in reading through the list of scholarship winners and looking through the newspaper for the past four years. You certainly have been a talented class. So again, thank you. We applaud your, uh, your accomplishments and also we thank you for the contributions that you've made not only to this school district, but also to this community. You have done some great things in your time here in Hudson, so thank you. And whether you are continuing your education, and it sounds uh, like a lot of you are, whether you're continuing and going on for further education, whether you've got a job that's waiting for you, maybe you're joining the military. Whatever it is that you choose to do, I wish you much happiness and success in the future. You certainly deserve it. So Principal Lucas, on behalf of the Board of Education, I gladly accept the class of 2005 for presentation of their high school diplomas. Before we hand out the diplomas this evening, I would like the chamber choir and senior members uh, to gather in the back for song, please.
At this time, we will have the presentation of the diplomas. Tyson John Abel. Brennan Thomas John Adkins. Allison Joe Alsleben. Ashley Renee Anderson. Carolyn Rose Anderson. Jacob Randall Anderson. Peter J. Baker. Ivan Kirov Banov. Amanda K. Barber. Bridget Ann Bardill. Maria Rose Barton. Tanner Cole Beach. Haley J. Boudry. Michael Anthony Beans. Curtis Began. Tyler G. Beinlich. Daniel E. Benoy. Tyler Tab Benzinger. Jordan P. Berg. Nicole Marie Bergeron. Jennifer K. Bergs. Ashley Marie Berry. Jacqueline Rose Beavers. Theodore Selwyn Bagyam. Benjamin Howard Bick. Jacob P. Bloom. Andrew John Bombach. Emily Bunsey. Alexandra Patricia Bosman. Brittany Lynn Bazard. Brandon A. Brantner. Gina Marie Breeden. Carrie Jean June Britton. Anthony Bruce Brooks.
Natalie Neal Brunel. Rhonda M. Burge. Emily Marie Burns. Christopher S. Busher. Katie Lynn Butler. Gregory D. Callahan. Casey H. Callender. Shane Michael Cameron. Colin Thomas Campbell. Milton Leonardo Cardoso. Ron E. Castor. Hikari Chio. Hillary B. Cleveland. Ashley Ray Close. Todd A. Cole. Laura Jean Congdon. Matthew Paul Congdon. Casey L. Cook. Sheena Marie Cooper. Nicholas M. Corbett. Christina Marie Coulter. Nicole Rachel Coverdale. Amanda Marie Cox. Nicholas Joseph Crane. Ross David Crane. Mark K. Cunningham. Brian David Dahl. Sarah R. Dahl. Nancy J. Dahlberg. Amelia Daniels. Janelle B. Daniels. Catherine M. Dansdill. Okay. Sarah Jean Darnold. Thomas Charles Datweiler. Elise May Davenport. Catherine Lynn DeGraff.
Ashley Jean Ann Dembroski. Nathaniel Edmund John Damoth. Michelle Kathleen Duty. Mallory Grace Doran. Jesse Eugene Doucette. Jacob Adam Drewiski. Alyssa K. Edholm. Adam James Ellefson. <laughs> Stephen Lee Engebretson. Marshall John Facino. Anna E. Feigley. Anne Christine Felberg. Emily E. Ferguson. William Martin Fireisen. Edward Fies. Jared Scott Fitzenberger. Aaron J. Fleming. Kyle Gavin Flesness. Lindsay Ann Fletcher. Molly Louise Fletcher. Amanda Lynn Forbes. Jana Ray Fosterling. Tyler James Fawkes. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Francis. <laughs> Shanna Marie Fredrickson. <laughs> Melissa Jean Freeberg. Jacob George Fritz. <laughs> Veronica Lynn Fry. <laughs> Dwayne Edward Furman the <laughs> second. Corey Graham Gaffer. Susan Victoria Gallardi. Michelle E. Galloway. Alicia Lynn Gans. Amber Ann Gans. Noah Garland. <laughs> Jessica Christine Garski. <laughs> B. 
Bennett C. Gaumitz. Natalie Faye Gavick. Ann J. Gavin. Terrence Michael Garrity. Matthew James Gianforti. Theodore Richard Gibson. Michael David Thomas Gifford. Brian J. Gilbert. Gordon William Gilbert. Stephanie Todd Gilland. Catherine Elaine Ginn. Daniel John Goldberg. Melissa Marie Gordon. Daniel Wayne Grunewald. All right. Sean M. Grunewald. All right. Stephen Lee Grisbowski. Adam Timothy Gunderson. Tara Linda Gashu. Danielle Maxine Gazda. Brian Douglas Hall. Sean J. Hampton. Gregory M. Haynes. Danielle Lynn Hansen. Catherine Ann Harmon. Kirsten Ruth Harmon. John Patrick Hartman. Brent T. Hauer. Joseph Clifford Hayworth. Jory Helen Healy. Ashley Nicole Heyer. Brian Andrew Heff. Kimberly Jean Hilke. Okay. Jesse Daniel Hoffman. Christopher Robert Hogberg.
Amber K. Holland. Stephen David Waro. Laura Catherine Howard. Cassandra C. Hewa. Kyle Patrick Hughes. Jamie Isker. Kelsey Jean Iverson. Garner Jarrett. John Jenkinson. Kevin M. John. Ashley Lynn Johnson. Christina Brooke Johnson. Lauren E. Johnson. Hollis Lee Jones. Ashley Nicole Kavitz. Jordan Robert Kane. Cassandra Joe Kelly. Canel. Joshua Richard Canell. Joshua Allen Keski. Candace Denae Kiefer. Megan Patricia Kurt. Brianna Marie Klatt. Casey Joe Klatt. Samuel Ying Ko. Alyssa Nicole Conkel. Anna Marie Diane Katoski. Emily Christine Coates. Nicholas P. Kovach. Heather Ann Krieg. What do you want? Annie Cromer? Annie Cromer. William? William? Kyle William Cromer. Howard Leslie Kuhn.
Stephanie Ann Coleman. Eric David Kalzer. Zachary J. Kirky. Lisa Marie Lansendorfer. Ashley Jan Landers. Mary Jane Langdon. Christopher E. Larson. Nick Z. Larson. Andrew R. Lawson. Jessica Lynn Lawson. Ashley Marie Lentz. Jonathan J. Likewise. Russell S. Lindback. Megan L. Line. Congratulations. Sean Michael Lonergan. Cassandra L. Long. Crystal J. Lawrence. Nicole N. Lures. Jonathan T. Lundberg. Coulter J. Manley. Scott J. Mariana. Megan Ann Martell. Mackenzie Elise. Mackenzie Elise Martin. <laughs> Kelly Irene McCann. Okay. Ian J. McChesney. Rebecca Helen McCumby. Alicia Ann. Alicia Ann McKibben. Curtis Edward McMahon. Zachary A. McNamee. Anthony J. Meinke. You got it. Richard T. Messer. Got it. Jacob Russell Michelson. Matthew H. Miller. Natalia G. All right. Natalia G. Miller. And Catherine, you got it. 
Anne Catherine Moser. Elizabeth Mua. Andrew J. Mueller. Samantha L. Mullencord. Kelsey Ray Myers. Joanna Maria Nasvik. Amanda May Nelson. Jacob Gerald Newman. Eric Newman. Bryce A. Niehaus. Roxanne Nicole Niskanen. Norrell. Norrell. Okay. Teresa F. Norrell. <laughs> Elizabeth Menaya Ort. Brady Patrick O'Keefe. Tyson D. Ostland. Don M. Otteson. Brian D. Owen. Jack D. Page. As the formerly man, Spaggles, I don't know. Christopher Mark Paggles. Daniel G. Patrick. Ann Alicia Patro. Alexandra R. Pavic. Alexis Exania Penovich. Jennifer K. Persico. Corey Caitlin Peters. Daniel Edward Peterson. Daniel Mark Peterson. Joseph L. Petroselli. Joshua D. Phillips. James Michael Pigeon. Jeremiah Pike.
Christina J. Plummer. Chad A. Posta. Samantha R. Prouse. Jonathan Edwin Lytell Presley. Nicholas David Prots. Megan Ray Shabilsky. Christopher Wade Ransom. Thomas Ratajczak. Zachary Reese. Jared T. Ritchie. Emily Ann Rice. Carrie Lane Richmond. Amanda Jean Roberts. All right. Jake George Rohde. Jeremy Allen Rodewald. Rebecca Ann Reglin. Michael Jonathan Rood. Ashley K. Rose. Corey D. Rose. Mallory Megan Rowe. Alexandra Elizabeth Ruig. Ronnie Saxe. Right. Smile. That's better. Sarah Nicole Sadracula. Jessica Michelle Schaefer. <laughs> William Thomas Schertzing. <laughs> Erica Ann Elizabeth Schilling. <laughs> Derek Schley. Mary Dolores Schmidt. Derek Michael Schutnik. Megan Seagroves. Audrey Kathleen Seibel. William Joseph Setzer. <laughs> no. Travis M. Severson. Yeah. 
Eric J. Shaver. Catherine Sheridan. Andrew Shoemaker. Emily Jean Seacard. Emily Jean Seacard. Kellen Marie Sikorsky. Jeffrey Dean Seiler. Caitlin Rose Simons. Christopher Schoberg. Jacqueline M. Sletton. Kendra Jean Smith. Miranda Nicole Smith. Jonathan Spadino. Corey Spence. Zachary Spone. Adam Michael Spot. All right, here we go. You ready? Adam Michael Spot. Brandon William Stanky. Alicia Lee Stanger. Angela Steuven. Joshua Michael Sunquist. All right. Joshua Michael Sunquist. Emily Jean Swenson. Mitchell L. Swenson. All right. Zachary Aaron Zyman. Got it. Jeff Craig Talsness. Jessica Tavis. Nicholas Thonis. Ryan Jaden. Amy Tromner. Ryan Talgren. Kyle William Turner. Paul Stewart Turner. Leah Jean Ullum. Jillian Amy Van Coolen. Eric Vandenhoevel. All right. Eric Vandenhoevel. Gregory Lawrence. 
Gregory Lawrence Vaness. Nathaniel William Van Way. <laughs> Stephanie Francesca Vega. <laughs> Savannah Lee Vickerman. Natalie Ann Vieter. Right. Brianna Nicole Vitek. Kai Vu. Kai Vu. Kai Vu. Ashley Marie Wahlberg. Like my coat? It's very vintage, isn't it? Alex Wakeling. <laughs> Benjamin James Walbrun. Joseph S. Warnkin. Graham Philip Washburn. Allison Marie Waxen. Catherine Christine Waxen. Anna Melissa Weber. <laughs> Gerald Craig Weber. <laughs> Kelsey Ray Weber. <laughs> Ian Weston. Matthew Ryan Gordon Whitemarsh. Matthew Thomas Widgren. Matthew Thomas Widgren. Darcy Ray Wick. Kira Katrina Wilcox. Tyler Willaquette. Jennifer M. Wingy. All right. Philip Winkle. Jamie Lee Womack. <laughs> Ashley Marie Wuxinich. <laughs> Natalie S. Yanarelli. Benjamin William Yoder. Aaron D. Young. Ashley Zeza. Nathan Robert Zeal. Yeah. 
And finally, Carl Brent Zwiefelhofer. I present to you the class of 2005. <laughs> 